honestly, like we lament, oh, students don't understand free speech. Well, part of my argument is, have we done a good job of explaining it? Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Greg Lukianoff. He is the president of FIRE, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, and he's also an executive producer of Can We Take a Joke, a great documentary about politics, political correctness, and campus speech. Greg, thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having me. Let's talk first about the campus situation. Uh, there was a bizarre circumstance at Williams College. Yeah. Talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that one was, was particularly depressing. Now, I have to say, this has been one of the worst years for campus free speech that I've seen in my entire career, and, I've, and, and that is my entire career. But this uh, situation, you know, it's kind of typical to a degree, but it was a, a black liberal student um, who ran a program called Uncomfortable Learning, which, by the way, I've, I've spoken at, at at Williams, wanted to invite John Derbyshire, um, who, uh, among his other accomplishments, uh, has also written some fairly racist material. He's over a the years. former National Review writer who's now at Taki Mag. Yeah. And crossed the line a couple of years ago and has kind of been written out of polite society. Yeah, and, and, and he got fired from National Review for, yeah. for, for, for what he wrote. So this is a black student, African-American student, who wants to invite John Derbyshire to debate yeah. at Uncomfortable Learning. And he's overruled by the white president of Williams saying mm -hmm. that John Derbyshire cannot be allowed on campus. And the idea is like, but you, are you missing the context of that you're actually going to have a student who wants to, uh, wants to actually take this guy on one-on-one? -on -one? Well, that's a case at least where the student is actually kind yeah. of sticking up for, if, if not uh, Derbyshire's views, free speech or an exchange, a dialogue. Yep. Talk about Emory and yeah. what, what does the Emory incident with the chalk, uh, chalking for Donald Trump tell yeah. us about what's really changed? Emory's kind of funny because um, it, it's one of these cases where people at FIRE were like, oh, well, you know, because what happened is someone wrote uh, Trump 2016 and there were protests and there was, you know, there were claims that people were demanding therapy and people are claiming that wasn't really true, but it made national news, whereas as far as FIRE was concerned, this is just another day in the office. But I think the mistake that was made was, by, was the president came out and said, listen, we're going to be reviewing the closed circuit TVs. We're going to be reviewing all the tapes to figure out who this vandal was who did this chalking of Trump 20, uh, 2016. Uh, which, and that's what got us concerned, because we're like, no, you're not going to punish this person for, 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 for chalking because you don't like the, right. the, what he was expressing. Well, and, and you were, you've also talked about how one of the things that's different now is yeah. that in the past it used to be it was the administrators who were kind of forcing speech codes on kids yeah. or on students, and now it's students almost forcing the administrators to shut people down. Where did that come from and what does that mean for the future? I don't entirely know where it came from, uh, but you know, FIRES uh, was founded in 99. I started in 2001, and for the overwhelming majority of my career, what I've been fighting is administrative overreach. Uh, then the other phase was that the, the feds really started pushing uh, administrators to overreach. Um, so it was this horrible cycle. But all, during that entire time, the single constituency on campus that seemed to have the most common sense and uh, understand free speech and even due process the best was always the students. And somewhere two or three years ago, it just kind of changed right around the disinvitation season time. You co-wrote with Jonathan Haidt, the uh, uh, social psychologist at NYU, a great piece for the Atlantic magazine called The Coddling of the American Mind. Um, is that what's happening? We're seeing the full flowering of this kind of bubble bubble wrap protection of yeah. kids. To be completely frank, we really don't know, and I'd love to do a lot more research on it, but I think that honestly, that there's a, there's a I, freedom of speech is a really sophisticated concept. We're so used to it in America that we kind of forget how sophisticated it is. Meanwhile, if you have a K through 12 environment or a parental environment, when people are explaining, oh, free speech, that's just the argument the bully, the bigot, and the robber baron make. Um, that's morally persuasive, and if nobody's ever explained to you otherwise, then of course you're going to think that free speech is is, is the mean guy, mean person's argument. Well, and that brings us to uh, can we take a joke? Yeah. The uh, documentary that uh, was directed by Ted Balaker, uh, former Reason em employee, sure. and it was uh, done with some uh, Reason TV help as well. This is a movie about how political correctness and stand-up comedy are kind of oil and water. Talk about the incident that actually prompted the, the, the genesis of the movie. Uh, so a funny thing, well, I came out with a book in 2012 called Unlearning Liberty, and I got invited to do a lot of shows, but the most impressive, the one that I thought was the coolest, was I got invited to do a podcast at the Comedy Cellar with the owner of the Comedy Cellar, who, who just thought I was absolutely right. And there was a, a, a comedian on the panel with me, and it, we kept on talking about him being like the most liberal person on the panel and about uh, being a liberal comedian. And towards the end of the interview, he said, 
um, I don't really like playing campuses anymore because I can't use my good material. And that to me, I, it made sense to me already by that time, but I was really sh striking to hear that from a, a liberal comedian. Yeah, and since then we've heard Jerry Seinfeld, yes. Bill Maher, and Chris Rock all say similar things. What is the, uh, you know, why should, why should students see uh, Can We Take a Joke and why should all the rest of us see it? Well, the first reason is because it actually, it's incredibly funny. Um, we got Gilbert Gottfried in it, we got Penn Jillette, we got Lisa Lampanelli, we got Adam Carolla. The movie itself is great. Um, we also got the great Jonathan Rausch is in it. And it's also my attempt to sort of trick people into learning about freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. So we make the, we make the point um, that Lenny Bruce, the much venerated comedian from the 60s, wouldn't last for five minutes on the modern college campus. And sometimes people are like, oh, of course he would. It's like, no, no, look at his actual routines. He really, he, he really wouldn't have. So we parallel the career of uh, Lenny Bruce and make the point that we're creating a, a, a culture on campus. Uh, if you have a right to be offended, you can't really uh, have comedy. Uh, and the movie was recently bought by Samuel Goldwyn. Yes. Uh, so it's going to be appearing in theaters over the summer. Yeah, it's at least LA or New York, hopefully other places. That's great. What is the, um, besides more speech, is there a solution to uh, kind of the, the tightening of the, uh, the, the clamp on free speech? Well, you know, the thing that we need to do that we haven't tried well enough um, is that honestly, like we lament, oh, students don't understand free speech. Well, part of my argument is, have we done a good job of explaining it? And when people point out, when I ask them, well, what's the good book to, to teach you about freedom of speech? You know, the first book that comes to most people's mind was written in 1859. It's, it's on liberty, and that's the same year as Origin of Species. So I've been working really hard to break the, the, the components of freedom of speech down into tiny, tiny little chunks to explain why it's arrogant to be a censor, about why simple habits, like if we just got back to a, an idea of it's important to hear opposing points of view, it's important to give the benefit of the doubt, if you're intellectual, you should uh, consider it a duty to seek out smart people with whom you disagree. We could do a lot to combat this trend.